my adore my 64 my commodore 64 hi there and welcome to a let's type episode from the commodore 64 appreciation society this is a series where I reach back into the past and type out a program from an old computer magazine. And of course, once it's done, I play it. Today, we are going to type in a game called Jumping Jack from the May 1983 edition of Compute. Earlier, we typed in another game from this issue, Checkers, which is quite good. Check out the video if you're interested. Jumping Jack was written by Paul Berger and is a platformer where we take control of a guy named Jack. For some reason, Jack finds himself at the top of a large structure that he needs to get to the bottom of. Unfortunately, the structure is unstable and holes keep appearing on the platform, so he needs to jump them. That's it. That's the plot. There is just over one page of code to type in for Jumping Jack. Interestingly, they lead with the VIC-20 version, which makes me think that it was initially written for that computer and then ported to the 64. This probably means that we're in for a very simple game, as the VIC-20 came out a few years earlier and is much less powerful. Nonetheless, the article says that Jumping Jack makes full use of our computer's color and sound capabilities, so let's get typing and see what we get. I'm a few minutes into typing, and you can see my setup here. I use the Vice64 emulator on my Mac, and I'm able to conveniently position the code I need to type. This is considerably easier than how I used to type in programs back in the day, where the magazine would be awkwardly propped up on my desk, I'd constantly lose my place, have to deal with glare off the pages from my lights, and the writing was just so tiny. That said, I loved typing in programs back then and didn't mind the obstacles, but it's definitely a lot easier nowadays. I'm sure my 15 or 16 year old self would be amazed at this setup. Anyway, we're well underway with the code now, so let's jump ahead. About an hour has passed and the code has been fully typed in. You can see it here when I type in the list command. It's not a particularly large program. On disk, it uses 17 blocks of storage, which roughly equates to 9K. You could fit 59 million of these programs on a one terabyte drive. As someone who grew up during this era of computing, it never ceases to blow my mind when I think of how far we've progressed. Anyway, let's run the program and see what happens. We need to wait a few seconds for the game to initialize its graphics. Oh, and here it's painting its screen. Oh, and a syntax error in line 130. Errors like this are expected. Let's just take a look at that line and see if we can fix it. And ha, that's funny. Jumping Jack doesn't use sprites. Instead, its graphics come from altering the C64's character set. For example, you can see that some of the characters here have been replaced by graphics from the game. This obviously makes reading and debugging pretty tough, so I'll need to reset and do some debugging with the normal character sets. Okay, I think we're good to go. I fixed that problem on line 130 and found a couple of others as well, but I think we're in good shape now and we're ready to play. The instructions indicate that there is a single control. Press the spacebar to make Jack jump. That sounds simple enough. Once again, we'll wait for it to initialize. So that's Jack running across the top platform. The animation is pretty good, even though he turns off for a frame in the middle. And huh, did he just fall through the ladder? That doesn't seem right. Let's try this again. And it seems like the holes just appear in random, including directly in front of you. As an aside, there are sounds, but they're very simple. They're just these little pops as he's running.
Oh, and there we go, 25 points. Followed by a weird death. Let's try this again. I would really like to get past the first stage. We'll skip forward just a bit. Hmm, I jumped that with no points, where other times I get 25. It seems to be that you have to jump just a little bit before in order to get the full points. There we go, those were two smaller jumps and no points. And there was a bigger jump, and I got 25. And not to jinx myself here, but I'm getting pretty close to finishing the stage. Jump that one. 25. Come on, baby. All right, stage two. And we'll jump. Nice, 75. Having holes open up directly under you seems really unfair. That would have been easy to control for in the code, too. This is a tough game. Between the slightly unresponsive controls and the random deaths, it feels like getting a good score is just as much luck as it is skill. Jumping Jack is definitely a bit rough around the edges, and I feel like it's more frustrating than fun to play. It's a very early 64 game, and maybe it's better on some of the other platforms they wrote it for. Regardless, not every program can be a banger. It still was a lot of fun to type in, and it's always fun to jump into our time machine to explore a small piece of computing history. I feel like I'm having a pretty good game here, so I want to play this out and see how many points I can ultimately get. Those 75 point jumps were definitely helpful. because of course I die right before the ladder. We're on our final man. And there we go. It's fitting that the game ended in a random hole. I'll take the 375 score though. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this little trip down memory lane. If you did, please consider leaving a like or subscribing. And if you have any experiences yourself with Jumping Jack or typing in your own programs, I'd love to hear about them in the comments. Hope to see you again.